This is the monkey multiplier made by Popular Playthings. It's a big plastic slab with this monkey on it. The monkey has eyes, ears, a nose, a mouth, and these two feet you can slide back and forth, and hands holding this little ring that moves around when you move the feet. He looks pretty happy. Living in the jungle, I guess. You and I know what he's smiling about. He point his two feet at two numbers and his arms move to show you the product. That's one smart monkey. This is part of my video series about antique calculating devices, but this isn't an antique at all. I got it new for Christmas in 2016. You can buy a new one right now online or in a, in a store, I guess. But the monkey multiplier is a knockoff of a device patented in 1915 called Console the Educated Monkey. This was a tin toy for kids that multiplies in the same way. I guess somebody at Popular Playthings decided they'd do a modern version of console. But why'd they make it a monkey? Why not a robot or something? Or maybe a movie tie-in? Actually, the original console was based on a real monkey named Console who performed in vaudeville shows. The New York Times even wrote a little article about him. To me, one of the best things about console and the monkey multiplier is how simple and obvious the mechanism is. You can give this thing to anyone without instructions at all, and they'll figure it out in just a few seconds. Actually, monkey multiplier is pretty much the perfect name. With console, it might take you a bit to figure out what's going on, but with a name like monkey multiplier, you'll instantly figure it out. With such an awesomely simple design, it's weird that console had such a huge sheet of instructions, but I'm glad it did since they gave us one of the single greatest sentences ever printed on a calculating device. It makes no difference to the monkey whether children are bright or stupid. He never loses patience at having to answer their questions. It makes no difference to the monkey. You could put that on a t-shirt. Anyway, you point the two feet to multiply the two numbers. There's also this square over here. If you point to one number and then the square, the answer will be the square of that number, like that number times itself. So 9 and the square is 9 times 9, which is 81. That's cute, I guess. This square thing was copied from console, too. No sense changing it around. The obvious question is, how does that work? It's kind of a strange question because you can tell how it works just by looking. These things move, and there's a hinge under the monkey which moves the ring around. So what more do you want to know? It's a hinge. That's how it works. It sort of feels stupid to even ask the question because it's so obvious. But somehow that explanation doesn't really explain anything. The real question is how exactly the hinge accomplishes the multiplication. There ought to be some like mathematical explanation, like a slide rule multiplies numbers by sliding, and the reason it works is because of some mathematical rule of logarithms. So what's the mathematical principle at work with the monkey multiplier? It's actually not too obvious, but here's the answer. There isn't really a principle. The monkey mechanism doesn't actually compute the answers in the usual mathematical sense. Here's a clue about that. Check out 3 times 4, which is 12, and now I'm also going to do 2 times 6, which is also 12. The two answers were both 12, but you can see they're two different 12s. That suggests that the monkey isn't actually carrying out a specific process which gives the same answer both times. The monkey's hands are ending up at totally different places. Actually, every possible arrangement of the feet will put the answer hands in a different location, and somebody just figured out all the products and wrote them in the right place. This is what computer scientists call a lookup table. The device doesn't actually compute the answers itself. It just has all the possible answers pre-computed, and the machine just gets you the appropriate answer. So the monkey isn't really multiplying. Really, it's just finding and retrieving the correct one out of all the answers that somebody else computed when they made the thing. There's not really anything special about multiplication here. The monkey could have been doing any operation. Like here, I made a little insert, which makes it compute the greatest common divisor of the two numbers. See, the GCD of 12 and 8 is 4. Hey, you ever notice these numbers are mostly 1s? You ever wonder if you choose two numbers at random, what's the probability that they'll have the GCD equal to 1? That's the same as saying, like, what's the probability that two random numbers have no common prime factors?
Turns out the answer is 6 divided by pi squared. Seriously, I'm not making that up. Anyway, console actually came with an insert just like this to do addition. So this monkey doesn't really multiply. It just has pre-written answers and then it finds them for you. You know, this reminds me of a philosophical conundrum called the Chinese Room. This is a thought experiment created by John Searle. Imagine somebody made up a giant book of instructions for how to have a conversation in Chinese. Like, if they say this, you say this. If they say that, then you say this. Let's say that book had a pre-written response for every possible thing that somebody could say to you in Chinese. It is a pretty big book, or maybe lots of books. Anyway, if you're sitting in a room with that book, someone starts talking to you in Chinese, you could use the book to give responses. And you could go back and forth having a conversation, even if you have no idea what the person is saying, or what you're saying in response, you're just looking up the answers in the book. Now, by all appearances from the outside, you are having a conversation in Chinese, and that other person will feel like you understand Chinese, but of course you don't understand anything. You're just getting the answers from the book. Searle's idea is that when you're using a book like that, you obviously aren't actually understanding Chinese. You are simulating an understanding of Chinese. Point is, there's a difference between true understanding and a simulation of understanding. This is basically the opposite of the mainstream view of artificial intelligence that was originally articulated by Turing. But anyway, this is the state of the monkey multiplier. It's just reporting the pre-written answers. So according to the Chinese room theory, it's not actually multiplying, but it is only simulating the ability to multiply. And I wonder, what would this monkey think about this distinction? And what about Consul, the educated monkey? How would he feel to have his understanding brought into question? I think I know exactly how he'd feel. Mm -hmm.